Hey there everybody. Had a minute between labor inducing activities and mom's in there visiting with family so figured I'd come out here and have some fun for a minute. Here is my greenhouse. This is the NFT side. I'm wrapping the pipes so that I can control the water temperature so I can hopefully grow all year round once I once I get the kinks worked out. Over here you see there's tea, jalapeno, uh, grapes, pineapple. The one on the bottom left has been in there for two or three months and this one right here on the right has only been there for a couple of days. Um, let's see what else is... Okay, let's go down this way. This is how far I've gotten with wrapping the pipes. I've still got all that to do. This is my watermelon wall which is still surviving even though they've got terrible root rot. My tomato plants that have been horribly neglected and abused. They've had dry roots for several days at a time and the one on the right I don't think is going to make it but the one on the left is actually starting to come back which is surprising. It was at a at a more than 90 degree bend at one point. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the system's pretty much empty because I'm still working on stuff. Here's the three tomato plants I started right out here. I want to see how things would work and they're not doing very well but they're not dead yet so I guess I'll just keep an eye on them. This is my mixing station. I keep all my chemicals in here. Put a latch on it to keep the kids safe. These three valves control where the water goes. This valve up here supplies this bucket with house water which has been run through a filtration system. Uh, it needs to be improved on but it's better than nothing for now. And uh, that's, that's that. I'll put together a video later on to show you how that mixing station works. I think people would get a kick out of it. Uh, last thing to show you here is the reservoir. A lot of people give me a hard time about using five gallon reservoirs, but with my tomato system, the entire system is a reservoir. And then with the other system, it does pretty well. I mean, I've had it full with squash and everything else, and I'm still only coming out here every three or four days to top it off with, uh, with fresh water. Uh, overall, I'm happy with it so far and hopefully it uh, will start providing some food this season. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to please comment if you, have, uh, if you have any tips, tricks, if you see something I can improve on, let me know. And again, thanks everybody for watching. You guys have a great day. Alright, quick one. I am getting my butt handed to me this growing season. Uh, I'm telling you I've had worse problems with plants than I've ever had. And I don't know what it is that I'm doing wrong that is not working for me. Number one, all of my nutrient solution is falling out. I have done things exactly the same with the same ratios. You name it. I have no idea what's causing all my problems. I made this last night. An attempt to save what was happening to be a lot of my leaves falling off of a lot of my seedlings. And at the end of the day... I'm still getting some of that and I'm getting dried and shriveled leaves everywhere and I'm bringing it up close as close as I can in video mode these leaves do not look healthy I'm losing them left and right what I did is I ultimately took them out of the cube tray and I figured maybe they were drying up or something I have no idea and I put them in just like that and I just collared them to get a root growing along the stems. Overnight, people, overnight. I have no idea how this happened. I am now getting some white, kind of white compound inside there. Now, take that into consideration with the fact, look at all that nutrient fallout. I have absolutely no idea how that happened. I mixed everything as I normally would independently. I've got no, I'm just using my standard master blend. I've got my standard, you know, calcium nitrate. I'm using Epsom salt. So I think all Epsom salt is created equal. There's no fragrance or anything special about this Epsom salt. But ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm not sure what's happening. And my PPMs are falling and my plants are dying. Um, this is a different type of setup. This is nothing more than the, the cups. Those are my roots. Those seemingly work well, but I'm still getting yellowing on the leaves. Still getting yellowing. 
And as I open up my nutrient solution tray, still tremendous amounts of fallout. However, the cucumber roots are looking awesome. So I need some feedback, guys, because otherwise I'm going to be literally losing all of my seedlings. More importantly, I need to find out what's causing my, nu my, my nutrient solution fallout. Because, <laughs> come on, I've coached people in mixing Master Blend. I have no idea what could be causing this. Need your opinions. Appreciate it. Bye. Oh, it's a sad sight. Ah, oh, anyways. It's the end. I'm doing a quick uh, down and dirty for the uh, hot and humid hydroponic group here. I just want to show you guys something really quick. So, earlier in the season, Eric Heimel and I were goofing around, saw some some differences uh, in some ways to do some Dutch buckets. This is prior to him uh, going to flood and drain. And I figured, okay, what if we took a Dutch bucket, put a cap on it, and did a, uh, a siphon loop. Well, that didn't work out. It ended up screwing up my system pretty bad. But I had tomato plants on here nonetheless. And uh, what I mean by that is, is that there was a, uh, like a, like a bell siphon. We've, you've talked about it. We've seen it a couple times on here and I ended up having to go back over and switch it over to the normal, um, drain because it was messing up the way the whole system was flowing. It's hard to explain. I probably can't even explain it, but it just wasn't working. So I figured, okay, well, what would be the worst thing to do is to keep it just flowing over like that. Well, not only do I realize now that I got root rot, I couldn't even get in here earlier. It was so overwhelmed. Uh, but it just didn't do very well. It just didn't grow. A lot of silt built up in the bottom. Anyways, look at the size of that stem. Just not really impressive. Here's the other guy. Look at this stem, guys. This is my index finger. Crazy, and I'm sure when I yank this thing out... Matter of fact, let's just do that now. Okay, well, that's not going to work. That's going to be a little more work than I thought um, without trying to destroy my system. So it's in there. It's in there really good. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is going to be fun cleaning up this season. Anyways, this is Paul from Hot and Human Hydroponics. I got my workout cut right. We got my work cut out for me today.
Okay, so here's my reservoir right here. And it's a little bit ghetto, but I've got an Eco Plus pump down at the bottom. I forget how many GPH it is. I just made this quick little PVC uh, irrigation system. But anyways, it comes up, and as you can see, I've made this so that I can turn the, the water off from going up to the plants. Open this up, and basically when I mix up nutrients, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, it mixes them really quickly. From here, the water comes out, and I've got six rows of tomatoes. So for each row, I've got this little valve, and it helps me really tweak it so that everything gets fed about the same. Uh, you can see the irrigation goes up to each row. Um, right here for these three rows, I just kind of zip tied my white poly tubing together. I made this little PVC thing to, to hold my lines up and keep them from getting really bundled up and that way the nutrients flow right back to the reservoir pretty well. Uh, my timer is a cycle timer. They're, they're used a lot more in aeroponics. But right now we've been getting a ton of rain. The tomatoes are ripening, so I'm not wanting to uh, cycle it as much. Usually I do about every 30 minutes, the timer comes on for 60 seconds and it feeds them just to keep them at field saturation. But I'll show you what happens. I'm gonna reset this. All the water flows up to the towers. I've got to get on this ladder <laughs> to show you what's going on. But up top is where I have all the peppers. And you can see right here, the water comes through a really small tubing. Uh, I think it's about 16th inch inner diameter. It's really small so that it's good at slow feeding so we don't get channels. But the water is going to come down through the containers and come out these holes at the bottom. So I go for about one to